I just can't help myself, can I? Where everyone else is playing Space Marine 2, I'm over here playing a game that was shut down 11 years ago. And why, you might ask? Well, I did explain this in my EverQuest Online Adventures video. But I'll explain it again here, just in case you haven't seen that one. See, I have this strange obsession where if a game is supposed to die, for example, let's say an MMO has its server shut down by the publisher slash developer and is not supposed to be active or available anymore, and players somehow find a way to make a private server and run the game themselves so they can keep playing. I just find that extremely fascinating and endearing. Mostly because I experienced it myself with Star Wars Galaxies, but also because I believe we need to preserve these things. People worked hard to create these games. Just because you don't like a piece of art doesn't mean it's not important. Doesn't mean it shouldn't be preserved. Doesn't mean that it's not still art. Even if I don't like a game, if the developers or the publisher had to abandon it for any reason, and the players are there to try to keep it alive no matter what, I'm going to be there to support them. So with all that being said, you understand why I'm making this video. Now let's get into this. Warhammer Online Age of Reckoning Developed by Mythic Entertainment, published by EA, and released in 2008, Warhammer Online lasted about 5 years before it was shut down in 2013, and only a year later a private server Return of Reckoning popped up. I've been meaning to go in and actually play Return of Reckoning for a long time now, as I am a big Warhammer fan and I want to honestly experience an MMO based on Warhammer, because I already love MMOs as it is. But my only experience with this was a trial account back in like 2008, around the time it was released, and that was it. I didn't, I didn't dedicate any time to it because I was already busy with two other MMOs, and I felt like I couldn't expand any more in that territory. So after going back and playing it, I'm gonna tell you right now, I 110% regret never giving this game enough time to actually cook, because I have spent about three days with the game now, and I keep playing it nonstop. I actually had to force myself to stop playing this game to make this video because all I was doing was playing Warhammer Online. I have filled my computer storage with over 40 gigs of footage from this game alone and I could have had a lot more but I had to get to tell myself stop recording more stuff we have enough to make this video. So here we go let's talk about what it's like to play for the very first time as a total noob to this game Warhammer Online Age of Reckoning in 2024. So, how do we play this game in 2024? Well, it's actually really simple. If you just look up Warhammer Online or Warhammer Age of Reckoning, you'll get the Return of Reckoning um, link pop up on Google Search. And from there, all you gotta do is make an account and download the game. That's it. For every private server I've ever played for any game, I have always had to jump through numerous hoops to get the game ready and up and running. But not Warhammer Online, you can literally just download and go. So after downloading a game while playing Space Marine 2, which by the way is amazing, if you haven't played it, you might want to check it out, I jumped into the character creator and had to decide what I was going to play first. So when you first create a character, you'll be presented with the option of joining one of two factions. You can join the Forces of Order, which is made up of the humans from the Empire, the Dwarves, or the High Elves. Or you can join the Forces of Destruction, which are made up of the Dark Elves, the Chaos, and the Orcs. Well, specifically the green skins, you can also play Goblin. So originally I was thinking of playing Witch Hunter because of the drip, or maybe a Dwarven Engineer because I thought that sounded cool. But then, in just that moment, I heard something. In the back of my mind, a dark, hushed voice whispering sweet nothings into my ear told me a single word, one that promised to alter my destiny forever if I would only listen. And that single word that it said was... WOG! And with that, Large William has returned. Only this time, he's bigger, meaner, and greener. And he's got a big chopper. Now that I've given into my inner boy and created a big, beautiful black orc, I'm ready to set out into this world of Warhammer and see what it's all about. So, similar to World of Warcraft, you're introduced with a little brief intro where someone narrates what's been going on in the world and why you're there. Um, you also have your own unique race starter area, also similar to World of Warcraft, and you'll probably quickly notice that the user interface in a way the game kind of functions is also very similar to World of Warcraft. However, I want to stress something. This game will definitely differentiate itself very quickly. You just got to give it a little bit of time. And when I say a little bit, I'm not talking about like one of those MMOs that tells you you got to play 100 hours before you get it. No, 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 no. no. You got to play at most, especially if you know what you're doing, like two hours before you really understand what this is about. Because 
I'm going to tell you right now, if you've never played Warhammer Online, it isn't going to be what you expected. At least it wasn't for me, because I was expecting a traditional MMO experience. So, given all my previous MMO experience, I just started treating it like any other MMO. I started questing, I started just doing the normal things you would expect. Go here, kill that, go here, collect that, go there, sell your stuff to a vendor, and upgrade your gear. You know, normal stuff you would expect. And, you know, to me, as I was playing it, I'm like, hey, at least it's fun. We're in the Warhammer universe. I love Warhammer, whether it's fantasy or 40k. So I spend most of my time just kind of leveling by myself. Did some public quests, though, with some players. But, you know, it wasn't a group. It was literally just us doing the public quests together. And depending on how well you do depends on what kind of loot you get. So basically, if you kill the most enemies or complete the most objectives, you'll get the best loot potentially as you get the highest potential roll. I would say it was a novel experience at the time when Warhammer came out because I knew of it as I did, like I said, play a trial. But, you know, these days a lot of MMOs have that same feature. I think Guild Wars 2 is like honestly built around that kind of questing system. So it's not really new anymore. I was already about level 3 at this point and I was starting to feel like I had seen this MMO already before a few dozen times as I've tried a lot of MMOs in the past and played quite a few MMOs. And I was kind of thinking, I'm fine with it. I'm glad it's recognizable for me and I enjoy Warhammer, like I said, so I'm just gonna keep pushing through and see what the game turns out for me. But then that's when things started to change. You see, I was encouraged by a quest to queue for something called a scenario quest, which I wasn't really sure what it was. I thought it was going to be something like where you um, go through like a dungeon or something with other players, but that's not what it was. You see, I got plopped into a PvP battleground-like zone. Basically, it was your standard battleground if you've ever played World of Warcraft where you have one team and another team trying to compete for objectives and whoever completes the objective and gets the points wins the game. I was so caught off guard by this that I was actually initially assuming that the enemies that I was fighting against may have been bots or something, like it was like a, a way to prepare you for PvP, but no, they were actual players. The scenario quest was pretty self-explanatory. This one was just capturing objectives and we did manage to win, which was pretty cool. Um, and I even leveled up for it, which kind of surprised me because coming from other MMOs where PvP is a thing, you don't normally get XP from PvPing, or if you do, it's very minimal. Normally, you just PvP when you hit level cap, or if you do low-level PvP, it's just something that kind of happens. I walked away from it with a positive experience, but it was nothing new to me. I've done it a million times before. I kept questing until I hit about level 6, and then I kind of started thinking, well, I think I've seen most about everything, but I started playing around in the UI to kind of see some stuff, and then I noticed something called War Report. And the War Report would teleport you to specific zones that you could play in, but I didn't really understand what the point of it was. I thought it was like for questing, like there were hot zones for quests or public quests. So I went ahead and clicked on it and it brought me to a zone in Nordland. So when I got teleported there, it landed me in this big quest hub where I was just having a ton of quests thrown at me. And a lot of these quests were telling me to go PVP and kill players. And I was thinking, okay, so do I need to do more scenario quests to kill these players? But no, I was wrong about that. It had nothing to do with scenario quests. You see, you get this quest that tells you to go scout out some areas. In these areas, when you get there, you get flagged for RVR, which is Realm versus Realm. Now, when you get to these areas, you'll notice that there are flags here, and they're being controlled by either the Order or Destruction, and players are fighting it out. Also, when you enter this area, your level will be bolstered to level 16. So I joined the fray, and what resulted was an hour-long battle of the Order and Destruction pushing each other back to each other's bases. And we were trying to fight for control of this area, but ultimately, I didn't still quite understand why we were doing this, and I thought maybe it wasn't worth the time, until I started to notice that I was leveling. And not only was I leveling, but I was going up in PvP rate. And I wasn't just leveling slowly, I was leveling fast. And not only that, but I was also getting tokens and access to new gear while doing PvP. I was gearing my character and improving my character by just fighting other players and doing objectives. So I kept PvPing because it was really fun to actually PvP in this game. And number two, I was actually getting rewarded for my efforts. Now, I was concerned thinking that at some point I probably need to go back and quest because I might get behind in questing. And I wasn't really sure what I was supposed to be doing if I was supposed to be PvPing so much. You see, I've been trained for years by other MMOs that basically PvP is an in-game thing that you do and it's more of a side thing. It's not something that you use to necessarily level up your character and improve it dramatically. It's just something that's kind of there to have fun with after you've geared out your character. You see, I was still not understanding what Warhammer Online was about. But thankfully, I ran into a player group not long after this, and it was being led by a person named Zadusa. 
Zadusa was actually helping out a bunch of new players and I asked if I could join and Zadusa let me join the group and Zadusa proceeded to teach us all the in and outs of the game. Zadusa taught us about where to find lair bosses for loot, taught us about how to actually play the objectives and how the realm versus realm combat worked. Zadusa also helped us get a bunch of free goodies early on the game, let us join their guild, and furthermore gave us items from the guild bank. Thanks to Zadusa teaching us everything about how the game actually functions and even helping us out really made our experience in my day one so much better and during this entire time especially during the pvp and you know working together on objectives it clicked for me and the game completely opened up and i understood now this was not your typical mmo it may have looked like it with the window dressing initially but it's not this is a game centered around pvp and the pvp combat is fun and it's group oriented and the thing is that you spend a lot of time out in the world fighting other players for control and as you do you earn rewards and gear up your character level up your character and level up your renown you see this is how the game truly is from level 5 onward you can pvp all the way to level cap and it is 100 percent what the game is all about you'll never feel left behind because your stats will be bolstered to match other players and as you gear up and level up it'll even itself out you see as you pvp you actually increase your faction's dominance on the server and as their dominance goes up it enables bigger and larger more pvp battles in other areas eventually leading to fortress sieges or even city sieges. This keeps going until one faction basically conquers the other faction completely. Once a faction completely dominates the other faction and takes control of all their territories, that results in the game resetting back to what is known as tier 2. Now, that doesn't affect your character's progress in any harmful way, like you're not going to lose progress or anything, but it will set the PvP brackets and zone controls back to tier 2. So you have to work your way back up until another faction completely dominates the server again. And then it continues to repeat itself. And there does appear to be some kind of season mode as well to the server. This game really does live by the Warhammer name. It is an eternal war that never stops. And I can't stop myself from playing it constantly. I had to peel myself off to actually come and make this video. Which, don't get me wrong, I love making these videos. It's just that right now, I can't stop my Warhammer addiction and this game is consuming me at this very moment. Well, I've only barely hit the point to where I could start playing in tier 2. I'm already hooked enough to tell you that I'm going to keep playing this game and maybe I'll make an update video and let you guys know where my journey ends up. But as of now, I've been trying out multiple different classes and the game has so much flavor given that it's Warhammer. All the classes are very uniquely done. There's none of that kind of standard fighter, mage, rogue archetypes here. Everything is unique in itself and it has its own unique mechanics and functions. And it makes the game so much more fun with these different classes because they're all so different from your traditional fantasy classes. So my recommendation to you is if you like Warhammer or you like PvP MMOs, please give this a try. I urge you, it'll cost you not a single cent to come and try out this server. And you're going to have a blast with it. And if you do decide to play, please play on the destruction side. Not only do they have the better drip, but we're a little outnumbered against the order, so we need the backup. As a total new player, I can't really speak to what Warhammer was like before it shut down, but I can say that this current experience is amazing, and I give it about a 9 out of 10. Actually, wait, hang on. No, 10 out of 10. If you like this video or it helped you at all, please like and subscribe and have a good rest of your day. Thanks for watching.